A privilege is a certain entitlement to immunity granted by the state or another authority to a restricted group, either by birth or on a conditional basis. Land titles and taxi medallions are pronounced examples of transferable privilege. These can be revoked in certain circumstances. In modern democratic states, a privilege is conditional and granted only after birth. By contrast, a right is an inherent, irrevocable entitlement held by all citizens or all human beings from the moment of birth. Various examples of old common law privilege still exist, to title deeds, for example. Etymologically, a privilege privilegium means a private law or rule relating to a specific individual or institution. Boniface's Abbey of Fulda, to cite an early and prominent example, was granted privilegium, setting the abbot in direct contact with the Pope, bypassing the jurisdiction of the local bishop. One of the objectives of the French Revolution was the abolition of privilege. This meant the removal of separate laws for different social classes, nobility, clergy, and ordinary people instead subjecting everyone to the same common law. Privileges were abolished by the National Constituent Assembly on August 4, 1789. One common legal privilege in the United States is protection from the requirement to testify or provide documents in certain situations. See subpoena duces tecum and privilege evidence. Welcome back, Attorney Steve Andre, and welcome to another exciting episode of Litigation Whiteboard. I hope you guys are all doing great today. Today we are talking about privileges, okay? Now this is something that can come up, usually in a case that's going to start in your depositions, oftentimes, where somebody is going to take your deposition, they're going to ask you a question, you're going to feel squirmish about answering it, you're going to say there's, there's something wrong here, maybe it's because you have a privilege not to respond, a privilege not to respond. So without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard. All right, here we are. We're back. Okay. So sorry about the lighting situation. I had to replace a couple of my lights. So you got this little ring around the ring around the rosy here. So I apologize for that. But we're going to talk here today about privileges. In general, I'm going to be talking about the California Evidence Code. Now, every state's going to have their own rules, okay, so this, but we're talking in California, I'm licensed California and Arizona, general legal information only, not legal advice, but some of the privileges that exist in California. Now, this is not an exclusive list, this is probably only a third or a fourth of all the privileges that are out there. There are tons of privileges, okay, you always want to hire a lawyer that knows the privileges, but I'm going to go over some of the main ones for you, the main ones that may pop up on a bar exam, things like that. But let's take a look here, okay? So first of all is the attorney-client privilege. Let me grab my green pen here. I just love these new pens. I have these art line, these art line pens. Fantastic, nice and thick. It's hard to find a really thick pen on the market, but I've found these and I love them. So um, but let's talk about number one, attorney-client privilege. Okay, so that's where you're sitting in a deposition and somebody says, what did you and your attorney talk about? Okay, well, that's privileged. You and your attorney have confidential communications. Those are privileged. You do not have to answer that question. And you're, uh, the lawyer, the one defending the person who's having their deposition being taken, would assert, objection, objection. Hold on, client. I'm going to advise you not to answer that question. That question is protected under the attorney-client privilege, okay? And so the person who asks the question may go like, huh, wow, okay, all right. And so your witness, you would want to instruct not to answer. Now, if you don't raise these issues in your deposition, you may waive them, okay? The old-fashioned saying in law is raise it or waive it. Raise it or waive it. So you want to be you want to be listening. This is why depositions are pretty hard, by the way. Uh, I love them. I find them very challenging because you got to stay mentally focused the whole time. Listen to every question and pounce on it before your client talks. Sometimes your client gets so in the groove 
that they just want to start answering. If they answer, move to strike it, move to strike it from the record, okay? So anyway, attorney-client communications can be privileged, okay? Now, bear in mind, there's also exceptions to these rules. Um, there's things where you're trying to per help perpetrate a crime or a fraud, those kinds of things. So there are exceptions to a lot of different rules. Some of these are qualified privileges, meaning you have the privilege, but if you abuse them, you lose them. Abuse, you lose. Okay, but let's take a look. Spousal communications. Okay, so I'm talking to my, my wife one night and I say, you know, I ran the red light and I hit that guy and uh, I'm being sued in a personal injury case and they want to call my wife as a witness and she can say, no, nope, um, I'm going to assert my spousal communication privilege and privileges against confident, confidential communications between spouses. So that's a privilege. You want to look for these. People call it two different privileges, okay? So you want to look into these. But spousal communications, why? They don't want to force my wife to get up there and testify against attorney Steve. That would be horrible. So you have these privileges for that reason. Patient physician, this is a good one. Okay, so you go into your doctor. Your, your doctor asks you a lot of things. Hey, you know... Uh, you know, do you smoke? Do you smoke cigarettes? Do you drink alcohol? You know, what's what's going on? Where'd you get the bruise? Oh, somebody pushed you down the stairs. Oh boy, you know. So you expect these records to be confidential. You go to the, your doctor. You assume everything's going to be confidential. Then one day you you sue somebody. You're a plaintiff in an action, and you sue somebody, and you say, "I'm suing you for emotional distress. I'm suing you for injuries. I'm suing you for this and that." And they say, okay, well, first thing we're going to do is go get all your medical records. And you say, well, whoa, wait a second. That's all privileged. That's all privileged. I saw it on Attorney Steve videos. If you put your issue at, if you put your medical or health issue on the table, if you put it at issue, as we say, then it's not privileged anymore. But any other time, other times, you're generally going to be looking at a privileged communication between you and your doctor, okay? Another one is the psychotherapist, okay? Uh, another similar one over here, let's just get to that one right now, the sexual assault victim and the counselor, okay? You're talking to the sexual assault victim, you tell them everything that happened. They can't call the counselor to trial and say, what did she say? What did he tell you? What did he tell you? Okay, privileged. Raise it. Raise it or wave it. Got it right here. Assert it or wave it. Strike it. If it accidentally gets on the record, move to strike it off the record. Okay. What else do we have? Clergy per penitent. This is one I always find interesting. And now it's kind of, I find it very interesting. There are websites online. Religion is not really regulated. It's not really a regulated industry. So there's people where you can get ordained online. I think the one that comes to mind, I think, is a universal life church. You can get ordained online, and you can pick your title. You can call yourself an archbishop, a priest, or whatever. It's religion, okay? People can start religions all the time. So here, if a clergy and is speaking with a penitent, that would be someone that says, please forgive me. Please, I've done so many wrong things. You know, Look up your definitions, look up your case law, but these conversations can be privileged, can be privileged, okay? So again, the, to me, a big question is, what exactly constitutes a clergy? Do you have to be ordained? Do you have to go through a four-year school? Can you just buy a card online and say, I'm getting into religion now and I want to I be an archbishop? These are important questions, okay? So if you have a case that deals with these kinds of issues, you're going to want to research that in advance so you know what your argument's going to be. If you don't answer, they say, well, you're, not going, to, you're going to instruct your client not to answer. I'm going to do a motion to compel. I'm going to move to compel. And if you already have your case law, you can say, well, listen, here's my case law that we're going to be relying on. Have fun, okay? Have fun. So that's the kinds of things you want to do for your depot preposition. We have reporters. Here's another one, big one, social media day. Everybody's a blogger, a reporter. Everyone's got their sources, their sources. But you always go, what are their sources? Are they real? Are they a friend of theirs? Is it somebody that's actually there in the White House on Capitol Hill? Who is the source? But the, the law protects these sources because we want information to come out. We want that big, nasty, dirty, secret leak. Okay, and we want to protect the reporters. Again, it's a qualified privilege. There may be times, I have Q there, there may be times when you need to say, sorry, 
But I remember on my uh, California bar exam, they had a thing where they locked a reporter up in jail and um, he asserted the privilege and the question was discuss, <laughs> discuss. So there you have it. Um, one final, uh, two final ones. I'm gonna go here, privacy. Now this one's kind of a little bit trickier. There are so many privacy laws on the book. There's your, your, your uh, movies you rent, there's your privacy in your financial records, your tax returns, your bank records, there's all kinds of privacy things, okay? Cable privacy, um, I mean, you name it, okay? There's privacy for everything. But not all privacy um, claims are going to be deemed valid. So again, another one you wanna research, but privacy can be an objection. How does this work? You say, sir, let me see your tax returns. How much did you make last year on your 2019 tax returns? I made, whoop, object, object. That is privileged information. Uh, we are not going to discuss that today. That is a privacy right every California has under the California Constitution, okay? Things like that, that's how you're going to do it. Raise it or wave it, baby. Raise it or wave it. Final one that I'm going to go over, the Fifth Amendment. Now, this pops up every now and then in a case where it may be a fraud case, okay? And I've seen plenty of fraud cases. Um, but say somebody just completely defrauded somebody and... Um, Basically, you're being asked questions, you're the defendant, your attorney's representing you, and you go, oh, I can't tell, I can't tell them what I did. I, I forged signatures, and that's a crime, and I, I did all these other dastardly things. I, you know, I, I did all these kinds of things. That's, you know, that's not good. So you don't want to be answering to those, because this is under oath. Your depositions are under oath. Uh, I forged the title. You do that, it's under oath, you don't change it. Usually you have 30 days to change your answers. You don't change it, now you just put, and you just said, here you go, criminal court, take this deposition, try me with the crime of forgery, I just admitted it, you know, bingo. So you have a Fifth Amendment right. This is a right against self-incrimination. For you law students out there, this is made applicable to the states via the 14th Amendment, the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. So the Fifth Amendment. Now, this is a little bit tricky because, um, you know, basically this can be done on a question-by-question -question basis. And I've sat in on very painful depositions, go all day long, and you say, well, where were you on the day of the 4th? My client invokes his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. Uh, I advise my client not to answer the question. You just go like a hundred times. So it's question by question by question by question by question. If somebody really wants to move to compel a response, they can go to court and say, judge, come on. That's not, that, this is crazy. I asked him what is, what, where he went to high school. Come on, that's not, that's not self-incrimination. So there you have it, folks. This is a general look at privileges. Again, this is general information only. This is not an exclusive list. There's probably... 20, 50 times more privileges. So do your privileges, check them out in your case, check your state law, know what you're doing when you get in on that deposition and you'll be ready to make that assertion to raise it so you don't waive it and move to strike it if, if accidentally your witness jumps the gun on you, okay? Attorney Steve Honor, and I hope you've liked this episode of Litigation Whiteboard. We're working hard for you. Stay safe out there. If you need to hire, retain legal counsel, civil litigation, California, Arizona, copyright, intellectual property, those kinds of things, you know where to find us on the web at attorneysteve.com. That's attorneysteve.com, the first name in legal services. I got to run. Have a great day. I hope this has been helpful. Bye now. And you know, this kind of feeling I believe is somewhat like rooted from, from the abuses of other Christians before misusing the privilege that they have.
Amen. Praise the Lord. It's an opportunity for us again to share His Word. Uh, today is Friday again, and it's time to listen to the Word of the Lord. Yes. Join me in this opportunity and privilege to be hearing the Word of God because it's not always uh, an opportunity or privilege that we are going to hear it, but it is Friday, so it's a perfect time for us to communion commune with the Word of God. So join me in reading Romans chapter 8, verses 6 to 8. Join me in reading the scripture right now in Romans chapter 8, verses 6 to 8. It is being said in here, The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot bow down our heads and let us pray together. Lord, we brought to you and we brought to the congregation last uh, Friday the rights of every Christian and also the rights of the, the citizens of our land. Today we are going to bring to you again a sequel of the Word of God which you have allowed us to share. Today it's about privileges. Be with us, Lord God, as we are going to discuss uh, this topic and so um, crucial, Lord, to our Christian living and even to our citizenship as a Filipino or a Christian citizen, Panginoon. So we just allow you, like God, to clear out the streamline and allow the congregation, even our brothers and sisters listening out there or watching to us, have a glimpse, not only a glimpse, like God, have a grasp, like God, of all the, the things that you wanted us to understand today. Thank you, Lord God. Hide me in the shadow of your wings and let your name be glorified in the midst of us, O Lord God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So it is rights and privileges. This is now the sequel. This is now part two. And last week we have been sharing with you and we defined the word what is right. And a right is an inherent, irrevocable entitlement held by all citizens. So, ibig sabihin po kapag right yan, hindi po pwedeng uh, ipagkait ng isang bansa sa isang sa isang citizen. So, inherent yan. So, kinakailangan ay mapupunta talaga sa kanya. Kinakailangan talaga ay mapapa sa kanya. So, yun ang, yun ang definition ng right according to Wikipedia. Yun po yung kanyang, yun po ang kanyang definition. Inherent. Sa atin naman po nga ng palataya later on, manalaman po natin na ang ating right at ang ating karapatan po ay nagugat yan sa ating pagiging anak ng Diyos. Sonship. So, hindi po tayo dapat magmalaki ng bawat isa sa atin. And we define or even classify the rights as natural, kagaya po ng life, property, liability, and love. Hindi mo pwedeng idikta ang mga bagay nito because it's natural. And since we are being governed by by the government so the constitution also define our rights kaya nga mayroon tayong tinatawag na mga bill of rights mayroon din tayong tinatawag na statutory rights kasi kinakailangan po ng enabling law at dinefine na po natin yan dati and yung ating pong constitutional rights nandyan, nandyan yan napakarami so, napakarami po hanggang ano yan hanggang 22 kung ating pong susumadahin Nandun po ang, ano, ang 22. But one thing that I wanted you to understand is yung, especially po, very applicable in our time right now, yung kung may mga nagkakaso, yung section 16 po ng Article 3 of the Bill of Rights, nakalagay po doon, right to speedy disposition of cases. Naalala ko tuloy si dating Senador Miriam Defensor Santiago, and he, she was a regional trial court judge, ang sabi po niya ay wala siyang pinipending na mga kaso 
sa kanya pong sa kanya pong jurisdiction dahil she believed that uh, without due process a justice delayed ibig sabihin po no justice is being denied so sa mga kapatid po natin na mayroong mga kinakaharap you have the right to follow up because uh, section 16 bill of rights article 3 po uh, uh, bill of rights po ano bill of rights number 3 or section 3 po ng ano no Article 3, Section 16, nagkasabi po na right to speedy disposition of cases. So, pwede niyo pong i-follow up ngayon. Dito lang, ngayon lang po natin siguro ito nakita na meron palang ganito. Okay? And, uh, ganito din sa sec Section 22, balansi po ang ating, ang ating sariling batas and even the governance today. Kasi kahit na yung mga nagkasala, hindi talaga sila pwedeng hindi nila po pwedeng hindi mag-attend ng, ng kaso kasi nga section 22 of article 3 ay bawal po ang ex post facto law or ang bill of attainder so dapat talaga a-attend sila sa hearing dapat po hindi na, hindi sila hugusgahan hanggat hindi po sila nakakating ng hearing meron din dito na you have the right to avail legal services for free so yun po yung mga bagay na nakadefine sa ating constitution Pero sa atin po, okay, our rights as believers at si Pastor Bong po ay sinamarize po ito na kapag may right po tayo as a believer, kayo po ay prince, tayo po ay prince, at kayo naman ay prinsesa, and in, in summary po, meron tayong royal ancestry because we have rights as believers. At ito po ay nag-uugat dahil tayo po ay mga you know, binigyan na ng karapatang maging anak ng Diyos. And similar with the natural rights, yung mga natural rights po natin, no law to repel or abolish it. No law to repel or, or abolish it. Kasi si Lord ang siyang may bigay ito. Kaya hindi po pwede i-repel or i-abolish. Let's go now to the very topic today. It's about privilege. That's in page 16 po ng ating, ng ating sinasabi. Pinapahapyawan na po natin yan dati-dati. Sabi po dito, a privilege is a certain entitlement to, to immunity. Certain because it is not true to all. May mga exemption, may mga privilegio. And it is being granted by the state or another authority to a restricted group. So kung, kung, ang, authority, kung ang privilege na yan is for a single group, for organization, for an individual, uh, <clears throat> hindi yan totoo sa lahat. No? Kaya nga po ay nalungkot tayo nung, nung ang prangkisa ay hindi po ibinibigay ang privilegio. So, privilege po ang mga bagay na yan. Meron tinatawag na privilege citizen. Ngayon nga po, parang tayo nga ay um, parang naiingit marahil ang iba sa atin, especially you wanted to avail a European visa or a citizenship or even you wanted to become a U.S. citizen, citizen because whenever you are entering a certain country, meron silang certain privilege that they don't require to process a visa beforehand that they are going to travel. They just have to simply present their passport and then by by authority of that passport, they are saying, ah, I am an American, I can, I can go and I can enter. So by mentioning the citizenship that they have or if they are British, um, they can just simply, they can just simply enter a certain country. And um, later on, we will be seeing some kind of disadvantage because it seems that they are, they are like an elite people and that they have this privilege only and to a point where they became abusive and some of our people also are becoming abusive of the privileges that they are having. Now, there's this certain observation among us Christians, and this has been a, a practice before. So it has been observed before that um, a certain group, I mean a Christian group, having this kind of privilege, being bestowed such kind, such kind of privilege, there is this point wherein other groups ay parang nagiging ano to lawyer, nagiging marginalized. Especially the non-religious group. Parang ang pagkakilala sa kanila, since they are not believers, ang nangyayari po, ang trato sa kanila ng ibang 
ng ibang tao po ay might have been uh, ano lang sila mga secondary might have been um, these people are are not since they do not hold the same belief as the Christian ang nangyayari nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na favoritism and even during the time when Paul was administering the believers during his missionary journey ang nangyayari po sa mga sa mga sa kanya pong pinupuntahan may mga discrimination po talaga na nakikita po natin that there are abuses Kaya nga po yung mga, mayroon talagang faction even to our brothers, to, to the other brothers and sisters which is which belongs to other religion. So, nakakaroon po ng faction because they thought that ah, since we are not holding the same belief, the same cultural background in terms of our faith, so sila po ay naiiba. So, sila po ay naiba. Sila po ay naseset aside. And, you know, this kind of feeling, I believe so, is somewhat like rooted from from the abuses of other Christians before misusing the privilege that they have na sinasabi nilang they are superior because they are they are believers or they, they hold a certain position in the organization of a Christian organization La, right now po babaguhin po natin ang perspective na yan ng privilegio dahil Kung titignan po natin, pansamantala, may mga privilegio na pansamantala. Okay. Now, not, not all of us really understood how to exercise, how to use our privilege. Not all of us have the right perspective on how to exercise, on how to use our, our privilege. Some people, although have that kind of position or have that kind of privilege already ang asal pa din ay parang beggars ang asal ang asal pa din ay parang uh, ang kanilang asal pa din ay hindi mo maintindihan whether they understood whether exercising their privilege they have they understood already that when you are exercising such kind of right and privilege there is a company circumstance to that Company, uh, resulting from exercising such kind of privilege. May mer- meron, pong, meron pong responsibility. Some of the people still act like peasants and beggars in exercising their privilege. Take note, we are prince and princess and we have royal ancestry. And in doing or or in in availing our privileges, kinakailangan po ay um, naintindihan po natin paano mag-comply. Naintindihan po natin ang accompanying responsibility and circumstance every act that we are doing. Sometimes kasi umiiral lang ang ating yabang dahil gusto natin, ah, I, I have this privilege, I have this right. So umiiral lang po, kaya ngayon po ay dapat matututo tayo. We need to have that kind of attitude. Di ba, tandaan natin, yung mga royal, yung royal people, may mga protocol po talaga silang sinusunod. Kung titignan natin yung kanilang mga aksyon, ay pati yung kanilang pananamit ay maayos, may organisadong organisado po sila. So, they, they, even, they even are mindful of, of what they are talking kasi pwede silang pagpipiestahan ng media kapag nagkakamali po sila. So, ngayon po ay take natin, tanggapin natin ang mga, mga protocols whenever we are uh, exercising our privileges. Today, bilang dugtong sa pinag-aaralan po natin, yun nga, pag-uusapan natin, our privileges from the royal ancestry's perspective. Titignan po natin yung mga privilegio natin na nakikita or batay po sa standard, sa protocol ng mga, ng mga anak ng Diyos, sa mga anak po ng Diyos na mayroong pong lahing royal. Amen. Yung katabi po natin ngayon ay mga mga lahing royal. Kaya sila po ay, siya siya po ay anak ng Diyos. Kaya malaman po natin ngayon, if we have been in struggle before, especially in the aspect of, you know, misusing the privileges that we have, salita lang tayo ng salita kasi, ah, ano naman ako, mayroon akong Diyos na, na pinanampalatayanan without having uh, assumed the, the responsibility or circumstance po ng ginagawa natin. And one thing that we need to understand about the, the privileges and in exercising our privileges is that here, 
we understand some kind of signage. May signage po tayong sinasabi. Anong signage ang sinasabi dyan? Kung, kung nakikita niyo po sa monitor, ang sinabi po ay stop here or else. I like to repeat. Stop here or else. Kapag ito po yung nakikita ng mga taong ubigin, kapag ito po yung nakikita ng mga taong mayroong Uh, mayroong pinag-aralan mga tao po nakakaintindi na there is an associated danger if they are not going to stop kasi mayroong or else eh, mayroong circumstance na na um, mangyayari ah, kung, kung tuloy-tuloy pa din natin ginawa tandaan po natin in exercising our privileges mayroong stop here saka or else kung hindi ka mag, hindi ka po uh, hindi ka po um, titigil or hindi ka Uh, maging cautious about what you are going to do there, there is an accompanying circumstance naalala ko tuloy ang isang tanong ng isang kongresista sa isang um, mayroong posisyon sa kumpanya po na kung saan kanila po ay kanila pong um, pinuproseso ang kailang prangkisa ang sabi po kapag ang asawa niya daw po ay, ay magkasala at kapag ang asawa niya po ay ang mangyayari sa kanya ay makulong Pwede ba po natin gamitin, pwede ba bang natin gamitin ang kanyang previous job or previous, um, ang kanyang kung previous na, 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 na performances of doing good in exchange sa kanyang kalayaan although nag-commit po siya ng crime? Ang tanong talaga doon, hindi. Kasi marahil hindi siya nag-stop. Ano lang siya? Tuloy-tuloy lang din. Tandaan po natin, um, we need to also adhere to some kind of signage. Now, from the scripture na binasa natin kanina, although we are privileged, we have privileges, there are things that we need to stop in here or else kasi may mga warning. So, let us examine from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 6 to 9, and when, what are the stop here or else na mga warning ni Lord? Okay, if we're to read Romans chapter 8 verses 6 to 9 Yes, we are, we are believers and the book of Romans were written or was written po sa mga sa mga mananampalataya sa Roma Ito po ang ito po yung message na doon Sa verse 6, the mind governed by the flesh is death Tandaan po natin, ito yung warning If you're going to continue living in flesh ang patutunguhan po ng mga taong ito ay death. Okay? Ito yung sinabi ni Lord from His Word. But the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Another warning. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. Yung mga na, nagpapatuloy na nagumuhay sa kasalanan, sila ay nagiging enemy ni Lord. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. And verse 8, those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Another warning. Kaya kinakailangan mag, mag-stop din talaga at mapukaw ang mga damdamin. Una, death, hostile to God, cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, They do not belong to Christ. Another very extreme warning na, na ipinapaabot sa atin ni Lord. No? Pin, ang mga extreme warning, ito yung, ito yung pinakahuli of do not belong to Christ. Death, hostile to God, cannot please God, do not belong to Christ. These are serious warnings na kung ang manampalataya, although privileged, Inuulit ko, although manampalataya, although privilege. What are the privileges? Right now, hindi pa naman tayo kinukuha ni Lord. So it is a privilege for us to to spend this life wisely. Privilege pa tayo na maglingkod sa Lord. Hindi dapat i-abuse. Privilege pa tayo na, na, na ma, ma, ipagpatuloy natin ang pamumuhay natin sa mundong ito. So we should not be abusive in in exercising our right and privileges. Nice pong ulitin, we have to stop or else 
ang mangyayari po ay uh, very extreme. Let us examine right now our privileges from the royal ancestry's perspective. That way, magkaroon na tayo ng, ng um, ang settlement of our faith must have been anchored already with the blessing accompanied doon sa pagtanggap natin sa Panginoon. No? Yung naka-anchor na ang panampalatay natin. We are already being stable right now. We are no longer being tossed from here to there with any kind of teaching because we are already anchored in Christ. We are already being anchored in Him. So, right now, maintindihan po natin yung mga privilegium natin bilang isang royal, bilang isang prince, or bilang isang princesa, or bilang anak ng ating Panginoon. From the very scripture, we're not going to go farther. We're going to focus in Romans chapter 8. Ang unang word po doon sa verse 1, Romans chapter 8 verse 1 is no condemnation. Can you say it uh, again to the person next to you? No condemnation. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 it says, Therefore, there is no, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Tandaan po natin, kapag sinasabing therefore, conclusion yan. Kapag sinabing therefore, I conclude. Kapag dati-dati nag experiment tayo, therefore, ito yung findings natin. Ito din po yung findings ng, ng courts of heaven sa atin nung, nung tayo nang ipag-isa kay Kristo. Ang sinasabi po niya, therefore, sa iba po, ang therefore, nakakatakot kasi therefore, ang sasabihin, you are guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Yung sabihin nun, na, na-exhaust na lahat ng, ng reasoning, na-exhaust na lahat ng mga argument, kapag nagkasala ang tao, therefore, hahatulan na po siya. So, uh, sa iba po, the, therefore, you are guilty beyond reasonable doubt. But in here, in the word of God, simula nang ikaw ay nakipag-isa sa ating Panginoon Yesus. Ang sinabi po dito, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. It has been found out that in the records in heaven, yung pong kasalanan natin na nagawa natin ay burado na. There is no condemnation. Ang tanong po, when? Ang tanong po ay when? From the scripture itself, sinasabing now. Amen? Ang, from the scripture itself, ang sinabi po ay now. So therefore, kapag may mga time na kung saan po ay binabalikan po tayo ng mga uh, mga tao na kung saan sa mga kasalanan na ginawa natin, hiningi naman natin na ng tawad, tama po, hiningi naman natin na ng tawad, o binabalikan tayo ng kalaban, ang kalaban lang naman talaga kasi ang, ang laging nagpapaalala sa atin, playing with our emotions. Ang kalaban lang talaga ang nag, nagpapasensationalize noong mga past natin and uh, keeping our emotions so weak. Ang sana, sinabi ko ng word of God dito, there is now no. I'm so glad that this, this word is being added in here which simply tells us about our present condition right now. That there is now no condemnation. When? Ang sabi po, now. And why? Ang sagot po dyan ay walang iba dahil kay Kristo Jesus. Why? Dahil kay Kristo Jesus. For those who are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. There is always an associated reason bakit po ay pinawalang sala ang bawat isa sa atin. Therefore po, kapag we are still having that kind of of problem in us na we are still being condemned by by the past we can always look to God seeking for refuge we remember before um, there is this grace being given to a criminal for for a criminal for example for him to be to be saved is that when he committed a crime he needs to go to a place called place of refuge and he need to take a shield in there and if he is going to go out from that certain uh, area and then those victims of him before might have seen him uh, they were actually given the authority to kill 
that person because he is a criminal. But if they are, if that person is under the place of God's of, of refuge, then he is safe in there. We just ha- we, we just have sung before. May, uh, just just today made me glad, and he is our shield. He is our refuge. Jesus is our refuge. He is your refuge. Whenever you feel down, you, whenever you feel you are discouraged, whenever you 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 are being um, persecuted, there is a place of refuge that we can go on, go to. It is Jesus. We can go to Him. Again, from the royal perspective, and uh, from the royal ancestors' perspective, on our privilege, those who have who are in Christ, no condemnation at this time. Let's go to the second point. Another privilege po mayroon ka bilang isang manang palataya is that you have spiritual ability. You have spiritual ability. Maraming ma-associate ito kasi even sa world, yung mga tao po na may mga skills, in fact, according to some kind of survey, ang bagsa sa atin ay mayroong mar- maraming abilidad, maraming skills more than 700 things you can do at your own in here po, naka-associate po ang ability sa spiritual hindi matay dito mang kukulam hindi tayo mga spiritista pero kinakailangan our association to is to, to I mean our ability must always be associated to, to the one that is the giver of spiritual gifts um, I, I remember one time. You know, sometimes I am I am in the garden. You know, whenever you are um, you are you are praying in there and uh, you are singing, the the air also is you know gushing, umahangin din, sumasali sa You know, when we worship the Lord, we are calling upon His we are calling upon His power. Mahikita nyo lang nyo lang po na yung ano yung mga yung mga halaman ay gumagalaw na dahil sa lumalakas po ang hangin dahil ikaw ay nananang, ikaw ay kumakanta at ikaw po ay nag-worship sa Lord. Similar po ang illustration na yan. Ang illustration na yan, once we, we acknowledge na ang ating ability po is rooted or associated from the one that is giving us this gift ay talaga po maging act, act, uh, active po ang spiritual ability na yan. Nuulit ko, hindi mga kukulang, hindi po tayo mga spiritista dito, ang ating ability is spiritual, our spiritual ability is rooted from, from God. Verses 2 to 4 of Romans chapter 8. Tandaan po natin, our spiritual ability, wala tayong pwedeng ipagmalaki, or else, maari kayong, maari kayong lulumpuhin ng, ng, ng kalaban Kasi nga naalala po natin ng isang gumagaya, ng gumagaya sa mga apostolis dati, sila po, siya po inilumpo ng kalaban. Dahil pa, kasi nananalangin po siya, kinakailangan pang banggitin yung pangalan ng mga ano, ng mga saint. Pwede namang sabihin diretso, Acts chapter 4 verse 2, well, pwede namang sabihin na in the name of Jesus, kinakailangan banggitin pa kung sino pa ang representative. In the name of Jesus alone, sabi po dito, dito because, because through Christ, so the, our association or our ability right now, whatever it is, this ability, whether you are saying na ang natural ability ko lang yan, pastor, natural ko lang yan, galing. Lahat ng yan, tayo pong mga mananampalataya ngayon, we exist because of all our abilities that might include our natural abilities that is rooted from Christ. Through Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Ang, ang pinaka pinaka mataas na ability na sinasabi dito is that the ability for us to live a holy life and that is the essence bakit bakit pinananahanan tayo ng espiritu ng ating Panginoon verse 3 for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh totoo yan, no? totoo yan. si Pablo nag-admit na he has been so keen in observing the law. He has been so keen in observing the law. You cannot question them for uh, him for that, because whenever 
you know, kung, kung susumadahin po natin yung mga ginagawa na pagsunod, he is number one. But it didn't make him powerful, especially in fighting against the works of the flesh, only by his association through Christ and the spirits indwelling in him that he was able to uh, to be freed from that kind of um, in slavery. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh so that all the condemnation that supposedly be given to us yun, binayaran na yun as sin offering. And he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us. Who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Amen. Yun po yung, yun po yung ano natin, yun po yung yung goal natin in our in having that spiritual ability nang sa ganun po ipapamuhay natin ang ang pamumuhay na spiritual hindi yung flesh no just a little illustration you know in in prayer um we are not praying in flesh because when you are praying in flesh that is memorization when you are play, praying in flesh that is like katamaran tatamaran ka magpray na na ano na tatamarin kang magpray and when you are in, when you are in spirit ang nangyayari po is that nalilenten ang panalangin because in the first place you are not the one praying but the spirit prays Nag, nagkakaroon ng groaning nagkakaroon ng tamang tamang pananalita kung ano yung sasabihin sa pananalangin yun po yung yun po yung basic na illustration doon Our spiritual ability is the result of Christ indwelling. Ibig sabihin po noon, kung sinasabi natin ang word na indwelling, permanent. Pakisabi po sa katabi natin, kinakailangan permanent si Christ dyan sa buhay mo. Being permanently present. Hindi mo dapat on and off. Okay? Through the Holy Spirit. And it is through the Holy Spirit that is why right now, we are being convicted with the, with the little sins and then We, we tend to confess of all these sins before the Lord and in that we are being cleansed and we became worthy again and, and having the privilege again to come before the Lord in worship. The Spirit comes to indwell, indwell us in order to produce holiness in us. No? Yun po yung pinaka-goal natin and that is the, the goal of having that spiritual ability as a privilege in our association with Christ. So the Spirit comes to indwell in us, to permanently dwell in us, in order to produce full holiness in us, even the holiness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hindi pala imposible yun. No, hindi pala imposible na maating natin gradually. Kasi sabi dito, even the holiness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, just to illustrate in this, paano yan, Pastor, anong sign that the Holy Spirit really is in indwelling in us? So paano natin malalaman Pastor, but Christ dwells in us. Yung palatandaan natin, when our holiness increased. Dati rati, hindi ka naman associated sa mga ganitong bagay about holy things. When our holiness increased. Yun yung, yun yung isa sa mga palatandaan that He is there with you. No? He is there with you. Kasi, um, nakukonsent siya ka na. You desire for holy things you desire for substantive things na hindi lamang sa mundong ibabaw na ito. First one, no condemnation. Second, spiritual ability. Let's go to third one. Relationship. No? Relationship. Another privilege ng isang mga royal. No? Relationship. Kung titignan po natin, country to country have diplomatic relation. Kaya nga po, ay may mga imbahada tayo sa mga bansa. Yung mga bansa na wala pang diplomatic relations, wala pa kasi um, hindi pa na-establish ang ties. And we need ties. We need relationship. And there are four, a lot of relationships that needs to be understood. In here po sa atin, ang relationship natin is not just temporary. It, it's not just based on bride. Our relationship po ay, ay based po dito sa scripture. Romans chapter 8 verses 14 to 16. 
For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. That's relationship number one. That's relationship number one. Amen. The Spirit rece you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. That's another privilege again, relationship again. Children of God, and in-elaborate lang po sa susunod, adoption to sonship. No? Adoption to sonship. Uh, in here po, minsan yung word na adopt, parang may, may association na, ah, ano yan? Kapag in-adopt yan, ma, uh, ano yan, i- um, hindi, hindi, hindi yan equal ang kanyang ang kanyang rights and privileges kasi nga inadapt lang naman but in here, kung inadapt man ako ng king of kings, okay na ako okay mo okay na ako, putang puta na Amen. adoption to sonship yung sabihin po nito ay um, ibinalik lang po yung, ang adoption to sonship it's very important because ang sonship in here is a, is a generation of of godly people na kung saan kagaya po nila ni Abraham na nasa godly line So, kapag sinasabing adoption po, ibinabalik lang tayo doon sa godly line ni Lord. Nang hindi lang po ito yung adoption na, yun nga, gusto mong mag-adopt, statutory laws yan, statutory rights yan, hindi yan. Kapag sinasabing natin yung adoption dito, kasi na, nahiwalay tayo doon sa, sa royal line ni Abraham. No? Nah, nahiwalay tayo na, i-adopt tayo muli para mapupunta na tayo doon, doon sa bloodline uli, o sa, sa generation uli, na nananampala tayo sa Diyos na ibalik po yung ating spiritual lineage. Na ibalik po tayo doon sa generation na makadiyos. Kaya kinakailangan i-adapt tayo doon. And that's relationship. And we begin that relationship with Jesus. Amen. Verse 16, The Spirit Himself testify with our spirit that we are God's children. You know, um, it, it is very important na yung affinity natin with our children, with our relative, relatives, nabubuo yan. Not just because we are giving dole outs, but this this kind of relationship has been established because it is genuine. In here po, mayroon pang witness. Kapag mayroong relasyon, kinakailangan may witness. No, na we witness po, kinakailangan dalawa mag-witness. The Spirit Himself testify with our spirit. Ayan. Hindi lang ito, ano, hindi lang ito dapat na ano lang, pakiramdam ko lang. No, pakiramdam ko lang. Ang sabi po, the Spirit Himself, dalawa talaga la laging nagtitestify upang ang isang testimonya ay mapapatunayan na totoo. The Spirit, nagpapatutuo, testify with our Spirit, nagpo-confirm with our Spirit that the person next to you is God's child. Yung mga tao po na, na tumanggap sa ating Panginoon, nakipag-isa nakipag sa ating Panginoon, ay anak niya. Tandaan po natin, dalawa ang nagtitestify dito the spirit himself and our spirit. Kaya kinakailangan ang spirito natin ano yan, bukas. <clears throat> Dito po ay sa, sa human relationship. Meron pong meron pong tumatawag sa ating na daddy, mommy, no? Papa, mama, itay, tito, tita, grandma, grandpa, lolo, sa kalola. May mga ano po, may mga may mga grandparents ngayon na ano parang ayaw nila magpatawag na grandma or or lolo or lola kasi parang it speaks about age but it's still a an address that speaks about relationship i i formerly grown up from the guardianship po ng lola sa kanang ng lolo doon po kami lumaki at iba talaga po ang ang pag-aalaga and now that we are parents also iba yung iba yung kero sa damdamin mo kapag somebody is calling you daddy or acknowledging you daddy. Iba po yung saya na nararamdaman po natin. There is genuine happiness when we hear that we are being addressed as mommy or daddy, papa or mama. Nandun po yung nandun po yung connection nyo na hindi man nakikita in, in hindi man nakikita na uh, in a physical in a physical court but when when someone is addressing to you, nandun yung damdamin po natin na parang sumasayaw sa saya dahil dahil inaddress ka, inacknowledge ka in a form of relationship. Yun nga po ay human 
human form of relationship. How much more po kung i-address natin ang ganyang pagkatawag doon sa ating amang nasa langit. Kaya nga po, nung tayo ay binigyan ng pribilehiyo na magiging child of God, nung tayo po inadapt to sonship, tayo po ay naging anak ng Diyos. That is why we can we can simply therefore conclude that each believer ang mga ang bawat man ng palata, palata, palataya po ay may placement in God's kingdom. We call this the sonship kasi nga po ibinabalik tayo doon sa linya, sa lineage ni Abraham na kung saan po ay sila po yung godly line na mga spiritual child din po tayo ni Abraham. Kaya nga po tama yung kanta na Father Abraham has many sons uh, and I'm, I'm one of them and so are you. And nakasulat din po doon na kapag tayo po sinasabing anak ng Diyos, natatawag na po natin siyang Aba, ang ibig sabihin po ay Father. Alam niyo po, ay may mga may mga time na kung saan naglalambing sa atin ang ang ating pong mga mga sa buhay. Dalawang best friends yan, tawag siyang katatlo, yung namimilit pa. Ano? Ano, namimilit pa ang tatawa, namimilit pa tatlo, tatlo ang tatawagin. And that, that is so emphatic. And how much more that we can we can give God a smile today by calling Him our Abba, Father. He is in heaven right now. By calling Him, by addressing Him, He is our Father. He is our Abba or He is our Father. We can address that each time. We can call uh, upon His name. Uh, araw-araw po natin siyang tatawagan. Araw-araw po natin siyang i-address na dahil siya po ang ating amang nasa langit. Lagi po natin siyang tatawagan. Kung gaano po ka siguro tayo kasaya na kung saan may nag-address sa atin ng ama or daddy or mommy ay ganun din kasaya ang ating Diyos kapag ina-acknowledge natin siya siya po'y nakangiti sa inyo nakangiti sa atin kapag sinasabihan po natin siya ng Abba Father. Siguro we have the moment today na sabihan po natin siya o tawagin po natin siya ngayon um, i-acknowledge po natin siya in our very presence we, we have to call him Abba Father. All together we can say Abba Father, I think kung narinig po niya yung genuineness ng ating heart, nang sinabi po natin ang Abba Father, sa po'y natutuwa sa atin ngayon. Amen? Sa po'y natutuwa sa mga sinasabi niya, sinasabi natin ngayon na nanggagaling sa ating puso. Three things na ang nasabi po natin, no condemnation, kailan yun? Now, we have spiritual ability as our privilege. Third, meron tayong relationship. Number four, we have inheritance. Meron tayong mamanahin. Amen. Meron tayong mamanahin. Kabalik ka lang po sa, sa kalangitan. Kaya sa kalangitan, hindi naman tayo nagpapatayan kapag ano po, kapag may mamanahin. Sa mundong ibabaw, nag-aaway ang, ang mga, mga relatives just because of the inheritance. Sila po ay nagkakatampuhan and to a point where naghiwalay po sila ng landas dahil po sa inheritance. Meron po tayong pamana. Meron po tayong inheritance na according to the scripture. Romans chapter 8 verse 17. Now if we are we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in His sufferings in order that we may also share in His glory. Tandaan po natin, there, there are words of association that we need to understand here in Romans chapter 8 verse 17. Unang-una muna, we are God's children. Can we say Amen? If you are God's children, then you are ear. Kapag ear po tayo, tagapagmana, tagapagmana ka ni God. And then co-ear with Christ. And then may nakalagay dito, since na co-ear tayo ni Christ, share po tayo in His sufferings, but then, share then of, of His glory. So, Ang, ang pamanang ito, ang privilege na ito, even if we suffer for Christ, is it is a privilege. Amen. Even if we, I'd like to repeat, even if we suffer for Christ, it is a privilege. Kasi in here, the words of association, ears of God, and who is with Christ. But then, ang sinabi pa, we share in His suffering. So, it, here on earth, there is suffering, we are sharing, kasi who is in Christ. At the same time, in the near future, and that is going to be discussed later in Revelation, share din po tayo ng kanyang glory that is near in the near future. So, we are God's children, 
that begins in the relationship, then we receive an inheritance from God the Father, but then co-heirs with Christ. Kaya tanggapin po natin ang experience na to, even if we are privileged, even if we are having royal ancestry, still, hindi naman tayo kagaya sa Europe na mga ano na talagang they live continuously, constantly, in, in the royal palace, in here, we are going to suffer, of course. We're going to suffer, but that is part of the inheritance that we inherited being God's children because we are co-heir with Christ. So we also suffer with Him. So either we are experiencing suffering, either we are we are being persecuted, that's part of the inheritance He has given to us. Kaya yung mga royal ancestors, mga, kap, mga anak ng Diyos na mayroong royal ancestry po, hindi yan ang reklamo even if in the midst of suffering because they understood clearly. No, they understood clearly. Hindi sila magrarali dun sa uh, dun sa street or hindi sila magbabayad ng mga tao para magrali just to voice out their cause because if, if, if that is what you are meant to suffer then so be it. Because suffering has, has dealt with someone's personal circumstance also by teaching us some kind of refining attitude We are being interrupted by power. Ayan. Ang sabi po doon, the word ear, from the from the Greek word kleronomeo, means a receiver of an inheritance. So with the Lord, may mga inheritance po tayo, receiver po tayo, recipient po tayo ng inheritance. A beneficiary. And if we are children, we are receiver of God's inheritance and being co-heir with Jesus. Tandaan po natin, dalawa, dalawa ang, ang ibibigay ni Lord, no? Dalawa binibigay niya. Co-heir pa tayo ng ating Panginoong Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So kung babalikan po natin, number four po, inheritance. Madali na po tayo. And number five po ay, ito na yon purpose. No? Some people do not understand the very purpose why they exist in life. So they tend to be very rebellious. Pero kapag naintindihan po natin na even if in the midst of glorious days or in the midst of, of victories or in the midst of suffering, most likely people tend to, to, to be surrendering in their life because, uh, because of suffering. But for us believers, since we understood our purpose that Really, our existence is both a blend of glorious days and suffering. So, we can, we can therefore say, nitong uh, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. So, ito yung dapat nating maunawaan, mga mananampalataya, mga kapatid, na yung, yung very purpose natin, why we are here on earth. Dapat malaman po natin bakit tayo nandito, bakit tayo nabubuhay sa mundong ito. Nabubuhay tayo dahil nabubu ang buhay natin ay para sa Panginoon. Yung purpose natin kung tinatawag tayo upang maglingkod sa ating Panginoon. So, whether we are experiencing happiness or um, suffering this time, ay na naunawaan natin na it's like a blend no, all of these experiences I transforms all of us and, and really life is a blend of all the ups and downs kaya nga magpapatuloy lamang po tayo. Another thing that we need to understand is that either we are at the realm wherein parang gusto na nating mag give up tandaan natin may mga time na parang wala na talaga tayong strength to go on tandaan po natin na Ibalik natin yung certainty. No? Ibalik natin yung, yung certainty ng ating panampalataya na hindi tayo kababayaan ng Panginoon. Because we are certain that all these, all, all things work together for our good. No? For our good. Because yun yung, yun yung sinabi niya sa the Word of God. Eh, to those who loved Him. No? 
yung minahal ng Panginoon, hindi naman niya hindi naman hinahayaan yung mga bagay na mangyayari sa buhay niya. Walang purpose, may purpose 'yan. No, may purpose 'yan sa buhay natin. So we are certain na si Lord alam na alam niya bakit niya, bakit pinahintulutan niyang mangyayari ang mga bagay na iyan. Well, some, some people might be might be paying so much just to to let them let someone explain to them the the scenarios yung, yung mga mga counseling well i'm not saying that it's it's not good to avail such kind of thing but there's no need for us to pay that much to learn let's learn by experience with god no let's learn by experience with god in yung kung tayo po itinawag ng panginoon tayo mga anak ng dios let us um feel our our time and even our days with the experience working with God. And that is more substantive than the things na natutudan po natin sa mundong ito. O nga, may marami tayong kakilala na nag-aaral sa matataas na mga paaralan, known universities and schools, very good speakers, but in the end, in their practice, they are they are devising some schemes to be corrupt. So, ang nangyayari lamang, ang, ang, kanila, pong, ang kanila pong experience and even their education is only in the mind only enhancing the, the communication skills to a point that whenever they are they are in, in, in politics or in position, they are going to use even their skill to to gain for their own. So, hindi yan, hindi yan ang gusto nais ng Panginoon sa atin. We might be suffering for doing good. We might be suffering because we reported a, a certain thing that, that, that exercises corruption. There are people in the government who has been terminated from their job for wrong full accusation na, na nag, nagsasabi lang po sila ng katotohanan and they suffered for that and you know, vindication will take time but for for as long as you stood for the truth and you know that that what you are standing at is really true, then you are doing the noble job lima na po ang nabanggit natin and lastly lima, na po, lima pong mga bagay ang nabanggit natin And and lastly po ay doon po tayo sa tinatawag nating lastly conclusion na nga po talaga, no? Part po ng scripture dito sa Romans chapter 8, um, may nakalagay po din na title, kinopya ko lang po. Ang sinabi diyan, we are more than conquerors. Can we say that again? We are more than conquerors. Let me illustrate this one thing is that If we are just simply depending on our natural abilities like yung mga ano mga tao na conqueror, yung mga tao na great men um, before when they are when they are um, conquering a certain place, ang lakas-lakas talaga ng loob nila. Nawawalan po sila ng nawawalan po sila ng um, ng takot and they they just simply go on, go on. You, you remember Alexander the Great, he keeps on expanding and expanding the territories. And he always commanded within himself, in his will. Siguro kung may mga tayo na discourage siya o nakuntin siya, tama na, ganito na lamang, he still have to move on. So parang ano na lang, stamina, adrenaline. Pero in here po, sa atin, sa ating pong spiritual, uh, spiritual life po, yung, yung, we have that that extra mile to go we have that extra mile to go uh, para magiging patient no when we are being violated or even our privileges and rights are being challenged we can still exercise beyond the limit of what is expected i mean we can still have that kind of stretching capability and uh, we we in doing that Um, the natural ability is no more, but the ability that comes from the Lord is the one that is present. And in exercising that, each and every one of us, although hindi naman tayo kakisigan, hindi naman kalakihan ng katawan, but spiritually, you became more than conqueror if you allow the Spirit of God to work within you. Kasi yun po yung, ano, yun po yung kinakailangan natin at this stage. Romans chapter 8 verses 31 to 39 Tayo po i-admonish ng, ng mga salita ng Diyos beginning in verse 
what then shall we say in response to all these things, to all these privileges that we have? Hindi, hindi tayo dapat bumalik doon sa pagiging uh, slave ang ugali or peasant na pa ugali na kung saan full of trembling and afraid of. Sabi po dito, the first thing that we need to to, stu, to stand by today is that if God is for us, who can be against us? Oh, amen. Pinanginilabutan po ako doon ah, dahil doon sa, sa statement na yon. Sa verse 32, ito na naman ang sinabi. He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for all, for us all, how he will not also along with him generously give us all things. I am smiling at this. I am smiling at this. Ang sinay po dito, graciously give us all things. Hindi po tayo dapat mapanghihinaan ng ating kalooban by just comparing our our economic status with others. Hindi po tayo dapat mapanghihinaan ng ating kalooban na wala ka ta sila mayroon. Bakit? Hindi po tayo na magkikwestiyon doon because in here sa mga royal ang sinabi po dito dahil associated na tayo kay Christ yun. Hindi lamang iyon ang ang sukatan ng pagpapala at, at blessedness. Ito po ang sinabi ng Lord graciously give us all things. Graciously gives us all things. Sumasagi din sa isipan natin especially ngayon po na kung saan ay nasa challenge ang ating ang ating trabaho meron nga po ay nagsasabi na baka nga po hanggang December na lamang kami so Lord, paano na yung future? Paano na ang ang future ni Nakambal? Paano na um, ano na ang susunod? Anong kakainin namin? Pero sinabi ni Lord na yung mga mga uwak nga po ay hindi naman sila nagtatanim okay? pero sila, sila po ay maganda ang kanilang kasuotan Mas maganda pa daw sa kasuotan ni Solomon. Hindi, din sila nag, na, hindi naman sila nag, nagsisipag masyado. Ano lang, namumulot lang. But God gave, him, gave them food. If these little ones, the Lord is taking good care, is going to take care all the more to His children. Amen. Verse 33, Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. The first point that we had before is that no condemnation already. Associated yan sa verse 34. Who then is the one who condemns? Ang sagot po doon ay no one. Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Another smile doon sa mga lahing royal. Meron pong namamagitan, meron pong tagapamagitan between between God and man. And that is Jesus. Amen. Kaya nga ang panalangin natin, lagi pong naka-address sa kanya. Ang panalangin natin, lagi pong naka naka-address at naka nakatuon sa kanya. Lagi po nating ibinabanggit, ipinapadaan sa kanya. Someone is interceding between God and man. God the Father and man, it is Jesus. He is there interceding. For all of us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Ang sagot po ay nay nay or no. Wala po makapaghihiwalay sa atin. Kaya po yung mga yung mga mga tao po na, na nagwawala doon sa dahil nawawalan po sila ng, ng purpose or direction sa kailang buhay might have been so discouraged because of what they have been experiencing right now. They are in trouble or hardship or they are being persecuted. They are in famine or in danger. No one can separate us because first and foremost, assured na tayo, may assurance na tayo ng kaligtasan no matter what happens in us. Ito po associated then sa verse 37. Sabi po dito, si Paul po ay naranasan po niya na naranasan po niya na, na nahirapan po siya to a point that he is like a sheep or or associating himself like a sheep to be slaughtered 
pero hindi din po siya maihiwalay ang pag-ibig ng Diyos dahil lang sa mga circumstances na ito. And lastly, ito po dapat nating paninindigan bilang isang manampalataya. Of all the things na minention natin kanina, di ba po? Una wala ka nang hindi ka na condemn, wala nang condemnation. Hindi ka na kinokondem. Meron ka pang relasyon sa ating Diyos na just nating nasa Ama. May purpose ka sa buhay na ito. Amen. May purpose ka sa buhay na ito. So dapat po ngayon pa lamang convinced ka na. Say it with me for I am convinced. Declare it with me for I am convinced. Amen. Convinced na, na tayo na kung saan ay neither death nor life. Either sa buhay na ito ay ma-exercise man natin yung rights natin or ma-enjoy man natin yung privilege natin. Ang nagmamatter the most, the, 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 the substance that matters the most is yung atin pong yung privilegio na mayroon tayo kay Christ. So sa mga nag-aalinlangan pa din sa mga privileges na yan bilang isang manampalataya dahil nasusubok kayo kasi yung sinasabi nyo, privilege naman pala ako, bakit naranasan ko ang mga bagay na ito? Dapat po ay isasantabi natin ang comfort associated to the privileges that we have in Christ. Kasi kung co-heir ka ni Christ, co-heir uh, ka ni God, and then co-heir ka ni Christ, kasama dyan ang tinatawag na suffering. So, even though you are privileged as royal, yet you are still experiencing some kind of um, of, of sufferings in life. Association yan, associated ang mga bagay na yan. So, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do we have to exhort all the more on this? No. Word for word yan. Yun po yung salita na iiwanan natin sa ating mga kapatid ngayon. Kung ikaw na nakikinig ngayon sa ating live streaming, wala pang hindi pa sure, medyo even, uh, being toast here and there sa kanilang panampalataya, this is now the time. Join us in, in, in faith. Join us in professing our faith. Join us, and this is very simple, just begin by accepting and acknowledging the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Sumunod ka sa maiksing panalangin na ito ng pagtanggap sa ating Panginoon sa mga sandali po nito. Aming amang nasa langit, ako po ay nagpapasalamat sa inyo dahil isang pribilihiyo na mabuhay. Minsan, Lord, nawawalan po ako ng pag-asa, nadi-discourage po ako sa mga nangyayari, sa aming kapaligiran. And, kailangan ko po, Panginoon, ngayon ng kalakasan. Kailangan ko rin ng kagalingan mula sa aking mga kalamdaman. Simula sa, uh, sa oras ito, Panginoon, ako po ay lubalapit sa inyo. Ako po ay nagpapakumaba sa inyo. Kinikilala ko po na ako ay nagkasala. At hinihiling ko po ng kapatawaran ang aking kasalanan. At simula sa araw na ito, pinubuksan ko ang aking puso at pinakapasok kita, Panginoong Jesus, sa aking buhay. Ikaw na po ang aking maging Panginoon at nagkapagligtas ng aking buhay. At simula sa mga oras na ito, ako po ay susunod sa inyo. Maraming salamat po sa kapatawaran ng aking mga kasalanan. Salamat din po sa pagtanggap niyo po muli sa akin at pagkilala sa akin bilang iyong anak. Ito po ang aking panalangin na may pananampalataya sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Ako na lamang po ang manalangin. Maraming salamat po aming Panginoong Jesus dahil ang presensya niyo po ay hindi limitado. Ay po ay nasa, nasa kalangitan ngayon at nanonood sa amin. Sino man ang tumanggap sa inyo, Panginoon bilang Panginoon Tagapagligtas, libo-libo anghel ang nagagalak sa kalangitan ngayon. 
Lord, aking pong dalangin, sino man siya, kilala niyo po ang kanyang pangalan, alam niyo din po ang kanyang kalagayan ngayon. We just have to perceive in our spirit that he must or she must be suffering right now emotionally. Marahil siya po ay isang frontliner na kung saan po ay nire-reject ng community at out of her or his service towards the community, all the more than God, hindi na ina-expect na hindi na nga nahuli lang sa kanyang pamilya, ngunit Lord God ay hindi siya tinanggap ng pumunta. Ngayon Lord God, I pray that you are going to comfort that person and that person right now will be strengthened Lord in the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord God, that person is going to be strengthened in the name of Jesus. Lord, sa salita na ibinahagi mo, Panginoon, ipinaalaalan niyo po sa amin sa mga sandaling ito. Lord, alam namin, Lord God, na wala pong makapaghihiwalay sa amin, sa amin pong panampalataya sa inyo. Kung kaya, Lord God, pagtibayin mo pa ang panampalataya ng bawat isa. Lord, um, pagtibayin niyo pa ang kanilang, ang kanilang pong panampalataya. Haya mo, Panginoon, na ingatan niyo po ang mga kapatid namin ito at dumating man ang unos ng kanilang buhay, O Lord God. Lord, kagaya po sila, Panginoon, ng bahay na nakatayo, Panginoon, doon sa cornerstone ng bato, ang cornerstone ng bato na yan ay walang iba kundi ang ikaw, ang, ikaw Panginoong Jesus, na dar, darating man ang bagyo ng aming buhay, kami po ay naka-anchor doon sa cornerstone that is Jesus. Salamat, Panginoon, for this opportunity and privilege to be sharing your word, and we just carefully return to you, Lord God, all the glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen.